amount of time later yep. you're telling me that more men yes want to know where this is going than yes. women yeah as in where oh. the relationship is going yeah, oh, I, thought you meant, <laughs> I thought you meant like where are you at like where are you location no 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 i'm saying the majority i would mm -hmm. say probably all it's always the women that's why i say the three words that men feel the most is not when a woman says i love you where is, is this go where's this going where where's this at mm -hmm. what are we Three words that men fear forever. Why? Because attached to that is the C word, commitment. Hmm. So, so, then, so then how is that you suppressing your emotions? That's your fault then, because if I'm asking you where is this going, yeah. and you're still suppressing your emotions. No, 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 but no, no. But what I'm saying is it ties to what we, what we were talking about earlier about when you said women suppress it, and it's like that for me mm -hmm. is the complete opposite to suppressing your emotions because now you're telling asking a guy where is this going do you know why i feel like women say that though um is because they don't they, they're trying to figure out right do i let myself in with this guy do i call everyone else and and what does that their emotions right that's yeah, not suppression exactly. of emotion well, no, that's, no, that's no, you venting trying to figure no, out it's a bit tactical i should as let well. you know my emotions yeah. or whether i should back off yeah, yeah. You, you know. it's look i'll tell you what maybe in people that i know case right mm. it's a bit tactical as well mm. because we're not all like wearing our heart on our sleeve it's also in the sense of okay where is this going do i need to cut off the other people that i'm talking <coughs> to and just focus on you no, no, or is this still like a talking stage and we're just dating I and i can still dip in i out? agree i agree right? i agree but that's not a suppression of emotion no, it's but not like for you to for you to sit at home remember and you're you, it's all women in here right you have thought about it a long time before asking that question you thought about when yeah. you're gonna do it you thought about how you're gonna do it do i text it do i call him do i say it face to face you're thinking about that for months before you ask that question that is not a suppression of emotion but until that point it has been suppressed because she hasn't said it earlier no, no, right fine that point is fine because obviously eventually everyone is going to yeah. release mm. something well right, human. So we all point. Know. So, i just yeah. think guys i don't know I, I really don't think they're they're the ones that are like suppressing their emotions that much in the beginning i feel like they're quite i feel like guys are quite vocal they're with not stuff. though because when they say bun her and that they're suppressing their emotion because they don't want to actually go to the root of why they've actually like yeah. no, but they have because they've her. said they're probably going to mention in with their guys like it, why it, they've cut yeah, her in my opinion i don't feel like they tell the truth though in my opinion when when a guy is with his friend saying bun her yeah. and da, 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 he's probably feeling the complete opposite inside and he's just saying probably, that yeah, his friends. Probably, yeah um and you don't know and it could be oh my god i miss her i'm in love with her and it could be that mm -hmm. but again this is what i'm saying these societal pressures has has created a society where men feel like they can't even say it to their own friends because my own friend will turn around and say bro man up bro this bro that da, 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 Come on. Something. so obviously you as a man and any other man that you speak to they will say the same thing it's built like for men to feel weak etc it's in our culture in our culture it's not culture it's every it's in a lot of places like it right. happens in england it happens in america like it mm. happens in a, yeah. a lot of places yeah but why is it do you think from your own opinion is it that you boys don't like come together and help each other through that mm. knowing how like you're both feeling the same way but you don't yeah. want to say it so it's like it may be easier for you to say it to someone who's in that same position and you're relatable to each other mm. rather than than going to tell like a girl where you feel like the weaker yeah yeah i mean it depends like i've got some friends that do do that with me you know we sit and we but it's i still got to get it out of them a little yeah bit. i feel mm. like generally men even with their friends it takes a while for them to like, like come out like it's 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 difficult and i, I think as women obviously you're never fully gonna gauge like how it is yeah, and i get that sure. but the fact that you're wondering is great but like i've got a mate that's back with his ex right now and i and he was t i was he was at my house and he's constantly on his phone and i'm saying come on who are you talking to man and he didn't say anything at the beginning didn't say anything didn't say anything and i was like honestly who are you chatting to and he just raises his eyebrows and i know that's his ex because they're back together mm. so he felt the need like he couldn't even tell me he's talking to her let alone back together and it's just part of that like it's that fear of my friend's gonna turn around and say why did you go back to her da, 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 and he's gonna mm. neglect his feelings because only a friend is neglecting your feelings if that's his response like if his response is come on bro man you could do better man da, da, da. that's him neglecting your feelings because the guy loves her you don't understand it yeah because from the outside looking in it's easy to speak yeah yeah you just dismiss it oh man if it was me i'd get rid of her it's like but you're not in my position though 
yeah. and that's the thing and it's like he he would open up but it would take a little bit of a bit yeah. of a push see what mm -hmm. i'm saying and then when i'm by the way and i've said this to him and i'm saying i'm totally against them back together but that doesn't matter what i think yeah you can say that all day yeah. long some yeah. people like you said they're in it so they're gonna yeah. do what at the end of the day he's I've, i haven't given my opinion he's asked me for my opinion my advice i've given it it is your choice as a man as a woman as whatever to take that or not take that and i still love you as a friend the same way obviously i don't want you to not listen to me because i feel like i'm correct and i don't want you to get hurt because I, I i love you as a friend i don't want you to get hurt but at the same time i've given you what i believe is the truth you can take it or leave it but at the same time when you turn around and haven't taken my advice and you turn around and say yeah i'm back with that i'm not going to judge you for that i'm just going to say okay i hope it works out and that's it but a lot of men have friends that won't react that way that will belittle them and that will say this and will say that and will dismiss their feelings and i feel like that's all under the same umbrella do you think it's like a defense mechanism when guys are kind of like oh come on bro kind of thing where they just don't really know how to emotionally speak to their friends no i just i look i'll be honest with you you know the ones that say that they've been in that situation themselves before mm. and they're probably going to be in that situation again and i just feel like it's oh look at me i'm a man at the time and it's just like dude like uh, two months ago you were probably grieving over the same thing yeah. so it's a bit like be a bit more empathetic if you especially if you've experienced it yeah. yourself it's like how have you experienced that you know how it feels but now you're telling me something else mm. it's like you should understand me more knowing that you've been through that yourself yeah so as, as i said it's all under the same umbrella man my last question with this topic is yeah. why do you feel like men have this trait where they get influenced by their friends so easily especially when you're younger you fall into a bad crowd you don't mm -hmm. have to get out but you're so influenced by your friends like they will literally in some certain some situations they will literally not care who their mum who their dad is who their girlfriend is who their wife is if their friends think that they're cool they will go and do it why do you think that's quite big with male culture i think um i can't say for all situations but i think a lot of the situations like an absent father figure you know not necessarily a, a dad that left you but a dad that lives with you but is still absent mm. you've got a lot of that especially in our culture absent dads that still live with you you know especially from an emotional perspective so i just feel like when they're especially at a young tender age when they majority of kids in prison in the uk are in jail because of uh being in care homes absent fathers being in care homes all of these things and what it what it is is what i believe anyway is they're drawn to these father figures people that will tell them people that they they, they that comfort them that then they'll listen to that you know yeah. they'll take their advice and they won't understand the concept of that's not a good thing to do but it's like it's that approval. it's that safety it's that approval it's that and i feel like a lot of situations is because of that you know and i feel like that, like i said with these things is a lot of deep rooted issues i think why this stuff exists mm. and i think that one for sure is definitely one of them why these like 14 15 year old kids are drawn to gangs early stuff like that it's got a lot to do with absent fathers and finding that safety that comfort that approval um somewhere else and then when it gets to that point they do whatever they yeah. want with you i was going to say because that ties in really like well into my question you probably answered it but like what y the role men like pay play in the family as well mm. uh, and to the success of the family do you think the way that you've described like holding your emotions and stuff like yeah. that do you think that men have less impact or less um less to do with the success of their children in comparison to women b because of these kind of things i mean i'll, I'll give you a, i'll give you a personal one right because I, I i speak very openly about stuff and i feel like people will always be drawn more to your own personal experience mm. rather than speaking about stuff that you've read or someone's told you my dad okay lived with us forever but my dad is extremely old school i'm talking protect your family provide your family nothing else matters mm. get the food on the table clothes on your back and that's all that matters and that's because we come from a culture that is uneducated we come from a culture that doesn't understand how 
you are with your kids whether you're there or not how it will influence their life later on how they'll perceive life how they'll perceive love how they will perceive the opposite sex how they'll perceive the same sex okay when you have an absent father especially emotionally you'll grow up craving that emotion and the first thing that you see or the first person you will cling on to that my sister got married at 17. wow, wow. okay I've got an older brother, I'm the youngest, I've got old, my brother's the oldest, I've got a sister who's the middle child. She got married at 17, an A-star student studying law, right? As far as me and my brother were concerned, life was different back then. This is like mm. 20 years, like 18 years ago. Life was different back then, so the worries for, for girl, young girls wasn't as much as it is now. But as far as me and my brother were concerned, we were like, fine, that's our sister, yeah. she's getting with a guy. My parents were totally against it. But you've got to ask the question what would a 17 year old girl that was that came to england at the age of six that's an a star student what business does she have being married to a man who is from a village in kosovo that has no education yeah. and no school what business does she have the life that you have here why have you clinged on to that and you say this to a costume parent, you look at ah, you yeah, she loved her, you don't know. And it's because we're not uneducated as a culture, we don't understand deeper rooted issues. Mm. That is a perfect example of an emotionally absent father. Mm. Mm. Perfect example. Like there's no example that anyone can give you that's gonna be more true than that. But the issue, it it's deeper rooted than that because that person, 99% of the time, I believe, will not end up with that man. Because then her happiness isn't with that man. Yeah. It's for a, f uh, an, a temporary fulfillment, a temporary void that's being filled for that specific time because you're in need of it. But there's, no, there's never, I believe, any longevity in that marriage. Mm. And guess what? Lo and behold, seven years later, she's divorced. Because yeah. it's yeah. not oh i'm happy with this man and i want to marry this man and i love this man is this person has given me i subconsciously because she doesn't even know but it's subconsciously what i'm in need of emotionally mm, yeah. and you cling on to that and whatever happens after that happens and you don't even realize it mm -hmm. so that that's the perfect example of females that are affected largely by it and then you look at myself and my older brother of course we're largely affected by that also yeah. you know in in different ways but the point is, is we're not educated as a culture on these things, so we just let it slide. And then that's what happens when you have things like suicide that happen back home. And, and, and they, they push their children down instead of trying to find out yeah. where how they are. Because they don't believe that a, a, a person should go through that. It's no, this, that, it's embarrassing, da da da, yeah. people know, yada yada yada. And it's like, have you ever, ever sat with your child or ever sat with, with your son? Um, and age has nothing to do with it. They could be 30 and, and, and feeling like that. Mm. You've never sat with them and asked what is actually wrong. Like, to speak to them nicely. Yeah. Like, tell me. Why? Because we're from a culture, and it's not just us, but I would say predominantly us, and I'm going to yeah. speak about my own culture. We come from a culture that just doesn't give a shit. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah, because it's embarrassing. Because it's, it's embarrassing. The shame on the yeah. family the shame. and this and that. Right. And and you go to Kosovo, they don't even know what depression is. You go mm. to Kosovo, they don't know what anxiety is. They don't know what mental health is. They know nothing they know nothing about this stuff. Yeah. Right? And they don't know how much their kids are going through, how how why their kids are splitting up from relationships so easily, why why their sons perceive women in a certain way yeah, yeah. etc they don't know any of this why because they never wanted they never cared about it they don't yeah. believe it exists and it's just an ongoing cycle ongoing cycle there's guys my age that are Kosovan that believe what their fucking parents believe yeah. Yeah. it's pathetic and you grew up in this country yeah but they didn't do the, their due diligence they didn't embrace mm. the fact that you have all the capabilities in the UK to learn everything that you need to learn and you didn't want to do it and you're going to follow your father's footsteps and your mother's footsteps good luck with that yeah. Let's just see how your how your kids turn out, let alone how you turn yeah, out. Yeah, honestly, because what you said earlier as well, like w w about the normality, like your you go to what you're safe with, what you're comfortable with, because that's all you've known all your yeah. life. Yeah, which normal. I agree with, and I feel like that's why a lot of people end up in that same cycle because that's what they're used to. But then I all, like we were speaking about this the other day, where it's like, but then you've been you see other people around you you've got like internet now you've got tv now there's no excuse yeah, now you like, know 
no matter what your parents are like no matter yeah. what your family are like like you do have a mind of yeah. your own and if you choose to kind of stick with that the nonsense that they talk about mm-hmm. and that is on you as well as your parents obviously like nurturing yeah. you into this kind of but you will be the person to suffer if you stick with that old school crap yeah. because but they, don't, but they don't feel like they're suffering because they actually agree with it so that's what's fucked up yeah but for example like you said in your case here yeah, like in your sister's case sorry you end up breaking up and then now as the parent you suffer seeing your child do that mm. so then the person who's next like the next generation has to look at that and be like okay well how am i going to approach that in a different situation or someone else can look at it and say okay that happened to this person how can i approach my child so that this doesn't happen to them and like you said they never sit down and talk no, they, yeah, they never discuss that, i'll give you an example now of of look, it, what, it, what, for me it works two ways you either see it and you replicate it or you see it and you do the opposite yeah yeah, yeah simple as that joe from you yeah yeah you've seen the life what he grew up etc i'm not saying i'm I'm not justifying his behavior because yeah, of yeah, that yeah. Mm. massively influenced by that of course massively yeah, sure. and you look at in the case of my brother for instance who has two children now he takes them to extracurricular activities he sits and helps my, his daughter do her homework he sits and listens to his son chatting rubbish he takes him to football yada 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 asks about homework asks, asks about school what are you interested in you you, you he's done his due diligence to be emotionally mm. there for them right but he didn't have a dad that did that so it's either you replicate or you detest as one or the other yeah and he's obviously seen that and he's probably doesn't realize how it's impacted it maybe he knows maybe he doesn't know right mm. i haven't really asked him but it's come from somewhere mm. that he he wants to do the opposite yeah you know it's come from somewhere and that for me is you're going to see as proof is in the pudding you're going to see how his kids are going to grow up yeah and the likelihood that they're going to grow up to be mentally in a better place and their perception of certain things mm. are going to be better is much much yeah. more likely they're going to be a lot more open to sp- going yeah. To, yeah. Your, yeah. to their parents as well to vent for anything mm. because if they are stressed out they will be like okay look my mum and dad are capable of actually speaking to me and caring about my feelings so i'm going to be more open to them as well if i have any worries yeah. but it's just it is yeah that that side i can't lie of our culture is it mental like i don't know so if, like, i saw your post of you know what ha- what's happened yeah. in in kosovo like recently about those guys that raped that girl like it's actually a disgrace yeah but that but, but that's what i'm saying that stuff like that is normal mm-hmm. like sorry to cut you when sure. i was growing up i always used to think yeah our culture with stuff like that w- that would never happen i i don't know maybe we, we i we had the perception of like being super protective of our, o- of our own kind and i never thought anyone would be capable of doing something like that to someone from their own country but it's just when, when you grow up and you get a little bit more educated and you see how their mindset is it's sad to say but i'm not surprised that that's happened yeah, yeah. But you know why it doesn't happen you think you think that that wouldn't be happening 10 times a day if it wasn't for the fact that we live in a country where first of all one it's small and two there's the whole concept of blood for blood yeah like, you know that there's people's parents that dads that have gone to jail for yeah. life yeah and that's not justice for them that's the only reason one in every three households in kosovo has guns yeah. which are illegal like that's, that's an insane statistic yeah right but why do you think they're not out there shooting and killing people because you kill one of mine i kill one of yours yeah, yeah. And, th- and that that is rife over there yeah do you see what i'm saying so that's the only reason because look in regards to that situation with that girl and i'll say this for any i'll speak for my own culture yeah, because I, I sometimes i get criticized for speaking for other people's countries even though you have the statistics to back it let's talk about my own country when you have a society yeah that does nothing or very little for little girls and women Mm -hmm. to save them to protect Mm -hmm. them from things like sexual violence things like domestic violence things like uh, abuse verbal abuse on the street as young as 12 11 12 year old girls that's a misogynistic society it's simple there's no ifs or buts around it when you do very little to nothing about it you are creating a misogynistic society you are brainwashing your young boys and 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 your population to believe that it's completely fine for yeah. a 26 year old man yeah 
to go and get his younger brother and two other minors and go rape an 11 year old girl for seven hours. It's fucking disgusting. Yeah? Because you build a society yeah. where it's fine to do yeah, that. You build a society where, the, where, where a man walks down the street with a woman in Kosovo and they're saying things about her in front of him. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't even it. happen here. Nah. That rarely even happens here. No, honestly, when I used to go when I was younger, now I'm like, obviously, I say stuff back. But before, I just, that's just the way they are. I never questioned it. It's just the way they are. Like, I was 14 years old and you cannot walk down a road. I don't know if it's because I was younger or if, like, now that I'm older, it doesn't happen as much as I did when I was younger. Like, 14, 15, I'd walk down a road. You not would not have one man that would not say something. Of course. And they're all literally either like my age or probably my dad's age. It's disgusting. So Look, and I that was just normal though. And, and, yeah. and what this is this is like the icing on the cake for me, yeah. Where you've got Kosovan guys, right, and that till this day that will turn around and say they're stuck up here, they don't speak to yeah. me, this, this, that. Oh, that because me. 10 minutes before you tried to speak to her, 15 dickheads went and verbally abused her. That's why. Yeah. And that's not to say you're going to do the same thing, because I would, and there's been times that I've tried to speak to mm. a girl in Kosovo and she's aired me. But as I got older and I understood the reasons why that yeah, happens, yeah. right, I understand it. That's why they, they don't even turn around and say, oh no, I mm. have a man. They walk past you as if you're a ghost. Yeah. They'd walk through you if they yeah, could, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And I didn't understand that growing mm. up. I was stuck up and blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. But it's because 10 minutes before that, she was verbally abused by some 60-year-old man and she's like 13. Yeah. That's why. But that's what I'm saying. When you, have a, a, you build a society, you build a culture that doesn't care. That's yeah. fine. You build a culture where where um, the girls get told it's their fault. Yeah. Imagine imagine a girl being told it's your fault for I why know. you were raped. It's fault. Imagine having a culture like that. So what what do you think it's gonna turn into? How do you think? What kind of country do you think you're gonna build like that? Havoc. How how does an eleven year old boy, right? Or what, I think they were still minors. They, were like they said 16, they were minors. Yeah. How does a sixteen year old boy know? that raping an 11 year old child is fine to do. Where does he learn that from? Exactly. Where does he learn that from? Because he has uncles, he has brothers that abuse women, verbally abuse mm. them. He probably has a dad that beats his mum in front yeah. of them. Yeah. And he looks at that and thinks, that's, yeah, that's fine. Normal. So when his dad, his 26 year old brother calls him on the phone, right? And says, hey, come, I'm gonna pick you up. This is what we're gonna go and do. He doesn't know to turn around and say, hey, that's wrong to do. He doesn't know. I'm not justifying what he's yeah. done. I'm just saying that you build a society like that and a culture like that and, and you vote people in office that do fuck all about it, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get 16-year-old kids that are going to think it's completely fine yeah. to do that. There was another one, I don't think you've seen it, years ago. It was a very young girl. There was footage of it. It was a very young girl and there's a couple of guys. One of them was actually her cousin, right? Yeah. And one of them tried to basically pressure her to give him oral sex basically and you could see it the Jesus footage was there I've seen Christ. the footage right how do children that age first of all even let's not even talk about how they know about stuff like mm. that because that's an easy answer but why do they think it's fine to do that why does her cousin who's who should be more empathetic as his blood not think to step in and do anything about that because he's seen that somewhere He's been told that. He's seen how people move on the street, how his 50-year-old uncle takes him to the shop and is abusing 14-year-old girls verbally. He sees that and thinks it's fine. Oh, my uncle does it. Yeah. So he grows up and does the fucking same thing. So they, that, that, there you go. That's it. You're so fucked. So basically we're all doomed. <laughs> no, I always say like our generation of open-minded people like those people should be stuff. hung. Yeah. Those people should be hung. Honestly, they there's, should. there's no, oh, God, only God can take life and all your nonsense. No, rapists should be hung. Yeah. yeah? Is anyone here Kosovan? Yeah. Well, I'll be, I'll You're be Kosovan. I'm Kosovan, yeah. I'll take them, te yeah? <laughs> yeah. 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 On shash and I will hang them. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. For every. I'll hang him there so that they can see him. And anyone that thinks that's extreme, no. What's extreme is what happened to the girl. That's nice. what's extreme. Extreme isn't hanging the fucking dickhead, which is what should happen. That's yeah. not extreme. That's actually normal compared to that. Yeah, they should hang him.
But no, what they're going to do is they're going to come out, they're going to bullshit in the media, oh, we're taking this seriously, you're going to give him... You're, you're going to give him life. No, I, like, I agree they deserve extremely harsh sentencing, but do you not think no. that... He should be put to death, there's no sentencing about it, no, there's no sentencing. Nah, the because death is too easy for them, big, no, That's too easy, no. they should suffer. Let me, let me tell you why death isn't too easy for them, let me tell you why. Because at the end of the day, I don't know your beliefs, I've never asked you your beliefs, yeah? But there's no judge in the world, yeah, that he's going to stand in front of, yeah, where he's going to have to just justify himself more than when he dies. Trust yeah. me on that. And I don't know how much you're a believer, but I'm a believer, so I can say it. Yeah, okay. Trust me, that, that conversation is going to be completely different, that sentencing is going to be completely different, that punishment is going to be completely different. Yeah. And he should be hung for the people to see and set an example. Of, of this is what will happen to you if you rape little children. You get yeah. hung in the middle of, I don't know if you've been Kosovo, but those places I mentioned is like the heart. Yeah. It's yeah. the heart Center. of the place and he should be hung from there and people should know why. And that's the only way you're going to stop it. Because 25 years in prison for me, that's too easy. Yeah. That's too easy for me. I just think like prevention is better than like cure. And that of course that's, that has already happened, yeah, of course. like maximum sentencing i just think to be able to stop that fully it, people need to be educated properly because yes fear 100 percent it stops people from doing a lot of things and i personally think what they've done is the worst thing that could the worst crime ever i just think the only way it's gonna be fully fully like fixed because that's not gonna stop them doing them that to their wives behind closed doors because mm. how are you gonna prove that that's done mm. Mm. i feel like education is gonna is gonna make everything so much better and as sad as it may sound yeah we are like 500 years behind yeah, it's gonna everyone take a else long time it's gonna take to so much it's gonna take people calling all these women that are protesting hoes and sluts yeah. and whatever but i don't know i don't know what's gonna fix it i just think well to start off with is an uncorrupt government yeah but so it's all gonna take a long time to be honest it's true but yeah what do you think as a society in the uk um would sort of uh better or decrease the stats of the rates with men in like the suicide rates and stuff like that or better the mental health or release the pressure what do you think society could like should do more of or do differently or what men could do differently maybe i think um celebrities coming out and telling their own story is a big factor because they have so much influence like tyson fury doing that i don't think you understand how critical that is mm. being who he is like it's unreal for him to come out and do yeah. that and be so vocal and so like um like actually telling the nitty-gritty of the stories yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's like that for me is key because th like i said then we go back to the convert earlier people with influence they have so much power that they don't even realize they have no idea like they have no idea whatsoever how much power they have and I just feel like look you can do your boxing you can do your clothing line you can do your music but just dedicate a little bit of your life to something you're passionate about maybe it's not mental health mm. maybe it's um, I don't know domestic violence maybe it's whatever whatever it is yeah. right just dedicate some of your time to post one post man one post and the reach that you're going to get the people that are going to reshare it to people that need it that might not necessarily follow you like that could change someone's decision right then and there yeah. and I feel like they have a responsibility in my opinion to to do some kind of work that, that will help in some area whatever they're passionate about I think that's a really really big step mm. and I think that will push the government right because there was kids starving in school until Marcus Rashford yeah. turned around and posted it yeah so that is proof that is evidence that it works when people of influence shout enough people of influence um, get out there enough the government don't give a shit but when they're under fire mm -hmm. and under attack they have to do something yeah because they're just protecting their pockets but when when you're under fire like that you have to step in and do something and it, it's, for me it starts there and then put pressure on the government that way and then they can open like courses or programs or places like this where men can go and talk about it or whatever the case may be and then I think that for me um, do you think women can do anything work. to help yeah. lighten that burden? Because, like you said before, if men are like suppressing their feelings, which if genuinely that is the case, it is extremely sad. Mm -hmm. So if they are suppressing their feelings, 
in front of someone who they genuinely see a, a good connection with and a future with then it will be nice as the person on the other side to know what we can as women do to maybe lessen that burden the thing is is like i I, w I could say like women should be more empathetic about it but you should only do it if you're honest about it mm -hmm. and you, we honestly we can sit here and i'm telling you some women just don't give a shit. yeah so i would say to those women there's no point because if it ain't real it's not genuine you're gonna see it mm. right so don't do it if it's not in your heart but if you're gen genuinely an, a woman who's empathetic and actually cares about men's mental health you should vocalize that to that person so Especially, like reassure them yeah. in the sense that you know you can speak like, to you're, you're good like, like if, yeah. if you like if you if anything's bothering you you could tell me like i won't look at you any different yeah that bit's important yeah i won't look at you any different and maybe not straight away but over time once mm -hmm. he sees that you know what she's genuine about that he might open up about a few mm -hmm. things he might tell you about his childhood he might tell you about certain things that bother him today that he suppresses because he just feels like i don't want to tell her yet or i'm not going to tell her because I don't want her to look at me like this yeah. and that and etc. So a lot of that, um, but again, there are women out there that just really just don't care. Yeah. Like, and they, no, it's there's true. There's nothing really that they they're gonna be able to do about it unless they want to lie and pretend. Um, yeah. And is there anything you feel like men could do, as a society, men, not just like the one man, mm. could do differently or more of or something that could better? I think until we change the narrative and we change how it's perceived, men aren't gonna do anything about it. Mm. And it's sad. It is, it really but is. Yeah, we have to change the narrative. To change. It's like asking the people who are suffering to do something about their suffering. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's borderline impossible because yeah, obviously. if that is being put on them, then the ones that are putting that on them need to. No, I meant in a no, no, no. I know what you mean. in a way of like men being there for other men because you know oh, yeah. that you're kind of in that same boat. So yeah. it's like being, because you said obviously like having like some sort of government where they open classes and everything like that i mean there's so many different things mm. out there for men but i'm sure that there needs to be more of but the issue isn't that it's the issue of trying to get a man into a yeah. class or but, a therapy but you, session but he's not gonna go until you change the narrative until you change the idea of that's not a masculine trait mm. until you change the idea of that they're not gonna go you have to change the narrative first. Once you change the narrative, then the results are going to be different. Yeah, I mean, so, changing the narrative is going to is a complicated. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a slow process. It's going to take um, a lot of people of influence and a lot of people people of power to to be able to achieve something like that. But that's the only way it's going to happen. Do you feel like also because obviously there's men who have influence and there's like nonprofits and stuff like that that do reach out to men to mm. be able to join them and things like that do you feel like maybe someone who would like to be part of that could go you know look for it as well because even if the narrative has changed it's mm. the same issue with so many things in society just because one majority thinks one way doesn't mean the other is so if the narrative has changed it's going to be different in a different area mm. kind of thing so i feel like sometimes like for women i guess when it's like oh women in work i won't go to somewhere that don't believe in women in work but i'll go to a community and a group like on facebook groups or whatever yeah. where they you know talk about it and i feel comfortable there mm. so i feel like not in a way of men need to do different i'm just saying that you know there are certain areas that you can kind of seek that mm. what do you think women can do um, open for open for the club for the for the room what do you think women can do i guess you can ask me all day and i'll say yeah, X, yeah. Y, Z, i personally feel like women what do you think i personally feel like women can express them about like literally like you're saying reassuring in the mm. fact that i'm not going to look at you different and stuff like mm. that or even women in influence kind of speaking about for example maybe an incident that they've had with like a man or anything like that that men can then watch and be like all right you know she's taking it quite cool so i feel like you know it's kind of being taken quite cool. Yeah, I think good luck getting a, a woman. Oh, yeah, exactly. Obviously, that. I mean, in the if, dream world. <laughs> if I was, if I was looking at a case that re related to women, and a man was speaking about it, I probably I'm not going to relate to it because mm -hmm. it's coming from a man. Yeah. yeah. But on me personally, I think setting the tone in a in any type of relationship that is with a guy, whether it's a friendship, a uh, relative, or like a partner, I think opening the opening that relationship with that genuine like. Um, 
gate of like what's that that safe space where mm. you can have just I don't know just saying to the person in the beginning like look this is how I am in a relationship I want you to be the same I'm going to be open to expressing my feelings I want you to be the same and then doing that constantly if especially for guys for example maybe if they are less prone to expressing their emotions do it a little bit more often mm. if you see that guy if you do see I feel like you can maybe pick up on some signs mm. some some guys literally like they've committed suicide and their best friend still to this day hasn't got a clue as to why they've done that mm. they've not left a suicide note or anything so i think instilling that and drilling that into their into their brains from the beginning and saying listen whatever you whatever's going in your in your mind i'll be your human diary mm. that's the only way in my mind like maybe i don't know i don't have the capacity to think further than that but i feel like that's how i that's how i am anyway because mm. i'm like that anyway i'm quite expressive so I want the person that I'm in front of to be with. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm not getting nothing out of you. Whether mm -hmm. it's good or bad, whether I'm going to like what I'm hearing or not, I want you to basically, like my dad says, spill your guts to me. Mm. And that's how. That's the only way I personally will find a man attractive, see a future with them, um, respect them, and basically just want to form a genuine connection with So that's how, this is how I have taken my stance on it. Mm. Um, it's... Yeah, kind I mean, of worked it's also but... like within the family because i guess you can't like when you go meet someone in a romantic sense like you have already built a personality like then you have to unpack it together kind of thing mm. but when you're within your family circle your sisters your mum um the way that they kind of are with you from the get-go i feel like that's yeah. going to be a very important yeah. way on how you then express your emotions to your romantic mm. partner so with like mums and sisters kind of you know validating your feelings and sitting down and talking to you and yeah. stuff like that i feel like that i don't know I, I feel like i got that a lot with my dad which is probably why i express that to other people as well so having that from my dad has made it so much easier that's why i don't see it okay, so as have, a downer have, right that's fine having said that so let's just attack that I, do we have much time by the yeah, way yeah. okay yeah. so let's attack that so i understand that makes sense as to why you're okay with it mm -hmm. because your own dad is like that himself yeah so for you that's just normal and anything outside of that you think is outrageous which is fine by the way to think that because i get it right but how is that how have your relationship been like your relationship or relationships if it's more than one i don't know how has that been? Because you're not going to find people that are emotionally as it's, expressive as your yeah. dad. On my part, it's been work for me to get it out. Okay. But I, I, I persist. Like I said, if I love this person, I will persist. Because I'm going to build a future with you. Or yeah. That's what I intended to do. So if I see something, even if I don't, I'm always going to repeat that saying because it's like mm -hmm. a mantra for me. It's like when it comes to respect, everything else, that is just another part of my qualities that I, I seek for in a partner, mm -hmm. expressing your emotions. Otherwise, if you don't, sorry, but you're invalid to me. I don't mm -hmm. need you in my life. Mm -hmm. I've got plenty of acquaintances where we can just have surface value conversations. Mm -hmm. So with my partner, I've always drilled that in literally all the time. So it's been maybe a slight chore in the beginning, mm. but then when they've seen that access and the lack and the lack of judgment on my part and the expressive, the way the way I've expressed myself, I've received it in. Uh, it's been recipro reciprocated in a similar way, mm. but a bit further along down the line, not too further, not too far down the line, yeah. but a little, yeah, okay. it did take it did take a little bit more work, mm. but I feel like like you can't give up on your partner. Yeah. And when you Especially see stuff like that. Yeah. Otherwise there's plenty of people to be having those normal conversations with. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Okay. So, yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. But that makes sense why you're like that. Yeah. Mm. If your dad wasn't like that, I don't think you'd have that same Oh, I hundred percent agree. Yeah. So Like I, I have two, three hour debates with my dad all the time. Yeah. And we're like going back and forth, back and forth. And his thing is, whether what you're saying is right or wrong, as as I just need to know that it's coming out of your mouth and you're saying it mm. and you've it feels so much better sometimes when you say anything. It hasn't solved anything, but you've just said it, and yeah, you, you just feel like, "Oh my feel. god!" Yeah, yeah, yeah it's mm. like a weight but off it's your just shoulders. a weight off your shoulder, and it's nice to sometimes hear your own voice say that. Because when you're arguing with yourself in your head, you're literally just going to 
like you're going crazy mm. Mm. you don't no one else no one else is giving you the pros and the cons or the the vice versa opinion of what, what's going on in your mind mm. it's like um there's that book that's with the chimps in your head mm. like you have that little chimp in your head that's controlling those things mm. but then once you say it i don't know it's for the other person who's receiving and hopefully you have a good partner who takes that kind of like um feedback in a in a positive way but if you don't then it is sad because then you're you're that's going to make you more close for the next relationship mm. Mm. so i feel like hopefully having these kind of conversations on here as well and having like a man that expresses like these kind of opinions mm. is going to help people because you do have a large following mm. and it is nice to hear someone from our culture have these opinions and say listen what they do back home is wrong this is what we should be doing I mean, and it's the step i've got something that i'm working on I haven't actually told anyone, but I'm going to tell you guys. Go for it. So I've got a friend who's, she's a psychotherapist. So she's got like her own business where she does it, etc. Um, and I'm working on doing an episode with her, but I'm going to invest a lot of money in it. It's going to be done proper, like, like proper. Mm. Um, because I feel like our, our parents say they brought us here for our education. Okay, fine. So let's talk about a topic that you've shy away from and you hear it from an educated person. So we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk mm. about generational trauma. We're going to talk about um, mental health. We're going to talk about anxiety. We're going to talk about all of that. You don't want to hear it from us because apparently we don't have the qualifications to talk about mm. it. That's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring someone that does have the education and you're going to listen to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay, I think it's, I think it's 120 pounds to have it translated in Albanian. Oh, that's, that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. So if you want to sit there and watch Sultan all day, <laughs> and you want to sit there and <laughs> watch God's your sake. Turkish soaps, Literally. you're going to sit there and watch this. There's no excuse. You can't say you don't know the language. Mm. It's going to be in Albanian subtitles. And you're going to watch and you're going to hear an educated woman speak about these things. And you're going to watch it and you're going to, you're going to deep exactly what this person is saying because someone needs like it needs to get out there. yeah simple as that yeah um and like there's just the way that i have it in my head like it's it it just needs to hit the right avenues and i i think we can get it we mm. can get it quite far we can yeah, get it yeah, back home sure. easily like i've got like some links and stuff where i can make it happen but it's just got to be executed mm. banging way like yeah. proper yeah um I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a really so interesting. So that, that definitely, that's 1 million percent going to happen. Um, and yeah, and hopefully they'll take little bits of it, whatever. They can put it back home on TV or they can put it wherever they need to put it. And if there's enough demand and other people want to hear it, read it rather in other languages, we can get it translated in subtitles yeah. in other languages. But I feel like, it ha like there has to come a point where someone's got to try and do something like at least try yeah. mm. like it might flop no one might watch it but at least you can say look you attempted i attempted i got the person i got the educated person with the master's degree that you've yeah. pushed us to get they're gonna come and talk about these uncomfortable conversations and guess what i'm even gonna pay money so you can read it in your own bloody language and you're gonna watch it simple yeah and hopefully is she knows. from the same background no she's english okay she's english um and she's, like I said, she's got a business where she does it. She's obviously got her own experiences, etc. cetera, yada, yada, yada. But she's going to talk about it and she's going to tell us, not just her own personal experience, but she's going to tell us what, what education says about it. Mm. Yeah. And let's see then if you dismiss it. Yeah. Let's see then if you dismiss people's mental health when she's talking about it and she's studied it and she's got a degree in it. I can't wait for this. Yeah, same. That's Thanks for the exclusive. Yeah. It's <laughs> definitely going to happen, for sure. Um, she lives... In like a small little town in Manchester so it's really difficult to get her to like mm. come down etc um, but it's, it's 110 percent gonna happen I found a website that does the subtitles so what they do is they just translate the whole episode for you so you send them oh, the wow. footage they translate the whole thing oh, and they have God. like native speakers of like majority of countries um, so that's gonna that's gonna be there people back home can watch it Let's hear what they've got to say about yeah. this. I can't yeah. wait. They're not. They, they might not be. There's gonna be mixed. Mm, very mixed. Sure. Yeah. Definitely mixed reviews, but. 
you'll know which ones are the bad ones, where they're coming from, like from back yeah. home. And... Yeah. When you hear someone like that talk about it and you still dismiss it, you're, you're the issue. They are yeah. going to dismiss it because they are the issue. Yeah. They don't want to hear yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but true. it's like you said it has to be done and i'm glad you're attempting to mm. do that so yeah. i always say this thing if it helps at least one person then that's my job done yeah yeah, yeah i think it's the right move and I, I'd, and i'd uh i'd rather do that than do 10 episodes of like for sure just whatever else i'd rather just put all my energy and whatever money i need to put into it i'd rather do it on this yeah make it like 90 minutes mm. hour and a half seems okay um different difficult questions difficult conversations mm -hmm. like the real issues mm. and she obviously knows them like the back of her hand so yeah let's see what let's see what comes out from it when are you planning to do it when do you reckon it'll be out i don't know um, i don't know it's it's i've got to find a proper place to do it like i'm thinking of like like uh, what kind of venue is it going to be a studio is it going to be but yeah yeah basically it's we'll see thanks for the exclusive and i'm sure it's going to be really su successful We'll okay. definitely be behind it. I'm excited for that to come out. But yeah, once again, thanks so much for being Thank on you. our episode. Really that was, appreciate it. That was longer, wasn't it? That yeah, was, it was a like lot an, longer. <laughs> was like that was a lot. Off. Yeah, but I think it's going to be sick. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I don't cut anything out. No, 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 no. No, no. It's no, going to no, be, no, yeah, no. I don't I don't cut on oh, my. Yeah. No, I don't cut any of my. Yeah, unless good. like there's a fluke and of what we say, like a little stumble, mm. then we just. <laughs> but don't worry. Cover your mistakes. No, 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 no. No, no. Thanks for calling me back. I always like talking to different people, especially girls actually, because. Mm. Sometimes I do a podcast of a guy, we're talking about the kind of stuff that I touch up on and it's a bit like... Oh. Mm. Surface level. Yeah, yeah, so I'd rather talk to girls about it. Um, yeah, this was good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in with, with us, guys. Um, yeah, that's in the group chat. Episode God knows what, but peace Ten, out. I think. Yeah. Ten. Well, I think it's... I think, it's is good. it? I think. Yeah. Not, mm, no. Yeah. But thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Peace.